I'm really excited today. I have a, a bunch of stuff to talk about that's all related to control. But before I get to that, I wanted to just introduce the show to the people that are new. So the Streamline Connection is all about how to tie everything together to live a more organized life. Because most people don't realize that organization is actually the key to freedom, wealth, and prosperity. It's that you don't realize that your freedom and stress are all connected to uh, the organization. You know, getting out of overwhelm uh, and feeling overwhelmed all the time, it's because of the disorganization. It's And it's more than just being tidy. It's all about how things are connected. The control you crave, which we'll talk a lot about today, and the freedom you desire, which is the opposite of what we're talking about today. So organization is that powerful tool. It helps um, you gain control of that external space, which is actually the reflection of your internal space. So when you're feeling overwhelmed, the outside is going to be overwhelmed as well. And so having that in alignment, figuring out how to gain control both internally and externally is going to help you scale your business, build your wealth, take more vacations, have more fun um, and freedom. Right. Because that's really what most of us want is a little bit of freedom to create a nurturing and supportive environment where you can thrive and to do those things that make you really happy and joyful. So here we're all about understanding that connection between mindset, simplicity, and focus so that you can make it easier. For those of you that don't know me, I'm a certified professional organizer. I actually sat for a test and I have to keep up with all the latest and greatest information on being organized. And, um, I'm also a money breakthrough business coach. And because of that, I have been studying how our behaviors affect our results and habits and the role of money mindset in how it all comes together. So I work mostly with busy creative entrepreneurs to connect those things, to really bring organization, productivity, and money mindset into alignment so you get to experience that freedom. Um, without giving up too much of the control that you kind of crave underneath it all, right? We're all a little bit of cream freaks, some of us in different ways than others. And that's what it's all about today. How do we navigate that control? Um, so it's also one of those items that's really hard to explain to people that by holding on to so much control, by not wanting me to touch your things when I arrive at your house to help you, by saying, oh, I know what's over there without really examining it. All those little things are control. And it's interesting that most people that call me want control of their papers, but not the information on the papers. Like they don't wanna to go to that next step. They wanna corral the paper without actually evaluating what's on the paper or they want to control the other members of their family. So my kids are messing up everything. My husband is messing up everything. My wife is losing her mind and can't control the kitchen and get the dishes done. Whatever it is that prompts people, it's almost always about some sort of control. They've lost control. They want to regain control. Things have changed. So every time we go through some sort of um, transition, whether we're sick or we move or we change jobs or we change our um, status in terms of relationships, all of those things can lead to feeling out of control. Things are uncertain and we don't like uncertainty. Our unconscious brain craves certainty. It wants things to be the same and the way we want them all at the same time. But it's not always wanting to make the change that needs to happen to get that control back. And sometimes control is what's in your way, what's actually keeping you from experiencing that organized life. So we're going to look at all of these things today. Um, and there's going to be a lot of concepts that uh, I might be doing some testing about because things have changed in the last few years. We're really learning how our brains work um, and more about how to work with our natural tendencies and so that it's it's easier in some ways but on the other hand we already have experience with the bad definitions of things or the um, common understanding of some of these concepts that may not 
be true. They may not be holding up when it comes to science. And so I want to look at a little bit of that as well so that we can all become better at living a more simple and organized life because really that's what it's all about, being able to live a life, not being worried all the time about all the things you have to do and not being worried all the time of all the stuff that's in your way. We want to let go of that stuff in the way and live that that more organized life um, so that you have the freedom. Pick up and go or pick up and read. <laughs> Um, you know, it depends on the day for me. Sometimes I like to go out. Sometimes I like to stay in. But having an organized home and office allows me to really understand when I can take off more easily, um, what's kind of the minimum effective thing I can keep, um, what level of order that is, um, how I can facilitate the things I want to do rather than hinder them. So anyway, I hope... Uh, it's great uh, conversation today. I know it's just me, but I'm going to pretend I'm talking to just you because it makes it all a little bit easier. Again, look for ways to make things easier. Um, so again, this might be a little bit difficult to understand some of these concepts. By all means, follow up, send me an email, put something in the comments. I'm happy to discuss further um, and explain and provide the resources you need to help figure this out. But basically, the reason we crave control, whether it is control of the mess and inability to let go, or control of not messing up something you did. So, you know, we all have at least one relative, I think, that has that um, area in their house where no one's allowed to actually touch it, or at least it used to happen. Not so much anymore, I've noticed. But there used to be like the formal living room where you weren't the kids weren't allowed to go in there so they wouldn't mess it up or you're not allowed in dad's office or you're not allowed in the master bedroom or you're not allowed to touch the things at grandma's house right so that's control of a kind but there's also control when you have a pile of things that you don't want to deal with yet because you're not ready whatever it is that's going to make you ready what what might be holding you back from either jumping in and doing that thing or letting go of that thing entirely. So both ends are control, right? And we got to navigate that. And control gets released by pushing your own boundaries just a little bit, by ex opening up and seeing what if. It's opening up to possibilities. So what if I did leave my socks on the floor over the night? Overnight. <laughs> What if I did not send every email? What if I didn't reach inbox zero? I've never been at inbox zero. I think it lasted 30 seconds the one time I really made an effort and it still just meant I had moved a bunch of things into a different folder so that I still had to process them. So by understanding that connection of I control this aspect and I've got to have the mindset that allows me to make the decisions about where, when and where I want to let go of some of that control to make things work, right? We got to make it work. Um, but also, how do we navigate controlling others? How much control do you have over other people? The question, the answer, it's actually zero. <laughs> we have no control. We can suggest we can set things up to make things easier we can share our reasoning and rationale of why we want things a certain way we can hope to get buy-in early in the process but just hoping and wishing things were different doesn't get it done so we're going to talk about how we can set those things up as well. How to how to get that buy-in from the people in your life so that it can maintain. And by the people in your life, I mean yourself as well. If you are single and like me, still have some organizing systems that I can't follow myself. <laughs> I want things to be different, so I set something up and then I can't necessarily make it happen right away. I have to get buy-in. I have to change my own mindset about how I want to approach that so that it works for me or I try it and it doesn't actually work for me and I have to adjust or change or tweak and that's what it's all about let's get experimental let's get curious if you want something to be different in your environment how can you make that happen 
by running it through your mindset and your behaviors so that you get the result you desire, okay? Um, it always starts with self-control. Uh, it's interesting too, when you want to affect the, the behaviors of other people in your sphere, whether it's your home, your office, or a, you know some sort of volunteer work you're doing, if you do it yourself and demonstrate and model what it can do for you, other people will automatically be drawn to that and or start noticing that you've gone through a change, a transformation, that things seem to be going better, they're calmer, and they may just start asking you about it, right? Um, I work with a lot of people that are interested in minimalism, and they always want to know how many things to get rid of. And it's really not about getting rid of a certain number of things. It's not that race to the bottom of, look at me, I'm living with one pencil and one fork. I, I don't, <laughs> that doesn't really sound that fun to me. What it really should be about is how do I let go of all the stuff in my way so that I only have the stuff that I need to live the life I want to live? That would be minimalism. If you want to be a little more cozy, what's the level of cozy you need to make that work? And that's your level of minimalism, right? It's not all or nothing. There are lots of shades of gray in between. You get to choose where you want to be on that spectrum. And in terms of controlling others, what is it about your own behavior and interactions with the other people in your sphere that is causing the problem? Did you not communicate what the system really was? Did you not show your family how to process laundry? Are you doing too much for them so they aren't learning what you want them to do? Um, it's been baffling to me a few times when I go to someone's house and they're like, I tell the kids to clean up all the time. And the kid will be like a three or four year old. And I will say, well, what have you, what have you shown them how to do? And it's like, well, I just tell them to go to their room and clean up. <laughs> You got to teach them, people. You got to teach the, the adult children. You got to teach the young children. You got to teach all the people in the, in the environment what you want to have happen. Most of us can go to a hotel room or a friend's house and not totally mess up their whole house. We might even be conscientious enough to take our dishes to the sink and help them wash dishes. But in our own homes, why don't we respect ourselves enough to do that for us? Right. And that's where we got to figure it out and um, see where our own behavior might be affecting what's going on. How can we adjust and share and bring everybody into the process for us? Right. Um, we're going to talk. We're going to be talking more about that when we come back. We do have to take a quick break. We're mixing it up today. Um, but I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined uh, Solution. I'm sorry, Streamlined Connection. The solution is one of my products, so you can check that out too. Um, I'm on Bold Brave TV Network, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about how our brains want to keep us stuck and what we can do to overcome that through the communication with others. We'll be right back. The Quick Start Organizing Series curated to point you to my best blog post to get you started eliminating distractions on focusing on what's important. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Ortiz Pino on the Mind Connection. We are uh, coming to you live from the Bold Brave TV network. And before the break, we were talking about control and how to distinguish between controlling ourselves and our own behaviors and controlling others. Um, and that leads us into how to know how to navigate changing our own behaviors, right? We have this unconscious mind that actually controls about 95% of all the things that we do. And it comes from experience and the things we experience not having killed us yet. So it likes to maintain that status quo. It is lazy, it will conserve energy. And so if things are going just great, it's from its perspective of you're not dead yet, it's gonna keep you there, which means you have to have something extra, some extra oomph if you want to change your behaviors. And you have to use your conscious mind, which is responsible for about 5% of what we do, to overcome that default setting, that status quo that keeps us stuck. And so looking at it from that perspective, it's no wonder it requires practice to change behaviors, to develop a new habit, to be frustrated when you can't 
find your keys three days after you've discovered that you want to can find your keys more regularly and set up some sort of system to hang them on a hook or put them in a special pocket in your purse or whatever it is. Um, and that on day three or four, you can't find your keys because you haven't yet taught your brain that that's where the keys go yet. It takes repetition, lots and lots of repetition. We're rewiring that unconscious part of our brain when we want to change behaviors. So it's not easy. It's simple. There are specific steps that can happen that make it work longer term, but it's not easy because we have to overcome the desire of our unconscious brain to keep things uh, not expanding too much energy, expending too much energy. It's going to try to serve energy every way it possibly can because you never know when you might have to run from a tiger on the savanna. I'm sorry, lion on the savanna. <laughs> Tigers are a little more jungle oriented, aren't they? Um, so what we want to do is recognize that that's what's going on. Once you recognize that, it's much easier to in the moment go, oh, I'm just defaulting to bad behavior right here and I need to overcome it with some better behavior right here. So we want to look at that curious factor, that how to be better every day, not I'm a failure, I can't do it, look, it failed once, I'm not going to try again. But from a, that didn't work, let me examine what I can do to make it easier next time. What can I do to recover? What can I do to cut myself a little grace so that I can try it again tomorrow? That's what we're looking for. And one of the easiest ways to stay motivated through a transformational change, which is something that gets rewired in your brain so that things are actually different. You experience life differently when it's transformation and not just fixing yourself. Um, it, when you look at it from that perspective, it's so much easier to stay motivated if you have a juicy desired outcome. And a juicy desired outcome is something that is aspirational. It pulls you forward. You practically feel it in your cells. So instead of just wanting to be more organized, why do you want to be more organized? What are you hoping to achieve on the other side of that organization, right? What's all the effort to make it happen going to help you do on the other side of it? What can... Um, what are you seeing? And a lot of times when we haven't practiced looking at our aspirations, when we go along um, and things are fine um, or it's just the way it is, there's we get to a point where there's a lack of curiosity, a lack of exploration, a lack of opening your mind to see what's possible. And so you have to practice that part of it as well. So there's repetition, there's practice on several levels. There's the actual behaviors, there's the um, learning how to be aware of when your behaviors aren't matching what you want your outcomes to be. And there is actually practicing imagination for possibility and and aspiration of what you want to be different. So it pulls you forward instead of saying, I'll never be like that, I can't get there, I've never been able to achieve that. It's the simple things, the self-talk, simply changing I can't to I don't. When you change something to I don't, it makes it your choice. You've decided that you don't do something versus it's happening to you. I have no control whatsoever. We have limited control. We do not have full control. So see how it works on both ends. You can't control everything, but you can control some things. And what you want to do is maximize what you are in control of and make that control serve where you would like to be, how you really want to live. It becomes much easier. It sounds, I know we're, we're getting really deep into theory today and some of the things that might be affecting your outcomes. Um, but maybe some of your outcomes haven't been well-defined or juicy enough to help you keep going through it to get to the other side. So it's all about practicing something and then adjusting it. Let's try doing the dishes every night. You know, there's a couple of different organizers that, um, that have been around a long time that kind of tout what happens when you do your dishes every night, clean your sink, and what if you make your bed every morning? get up and do some sort of morning routine that involves making your bed. Those are things that are quick and easy wins that aren't life shattering if it doesn't happen while you practice, but gives your brain a feedback loop that says, I am capable of doing things. Look, I just made my bed. 
I'm starting my day off right. And doing the dishes before you go to bed helps you think, I am setting myself up for success tomorrow. And I did that. It seems ridiculously silly, but it works. And it's how our brains change. It's how we rewire things. You practice and you adjust. Maybe you don't do your dishes one night and the next morning you wake up and you go to make your coffee and you realize, ah, that's not good. I didn't do it. I failed. Well, maybe you don't say I failed and I can't, I'm not capable of doing dishes every night. Maybe you just say to yourself, oh man, I totally forgot to do dishes last night. I have to practice. What can I do to remind myself to do the dishes at night so that I wake up and make my coffee in a nice, clean, fresh kitchen every morning that makes me feel on top of things and able to accomplish whatever it is I want, right? How do you adjust so that the behavior can become the habit? Um, and maybe you let go of something. Maybe you don't have time to do the dishes, wipe the counters, put all the food storage away and wait for the dishwasher to finish and put the dishes away at night. Maybe you let the dishwasher run and you put the dishes away in the morning. Maybe you don't sweep and mop the floor every night like you see on Pinterest. Maybe you do that every other night. Maybe you adjust how much you rinse the dishes before you put them in the dishwasher. What can you do to make it easier? What can you do to remember to do the behavior? And what can you do to remind yourself when you did complete it, right? What if, if you do it five times a week out of seven, you get some sort of reward. And at the end of say six months, you get a big reward. Then your brain is learning that there is a benefit to doing it this way, right? There is something I get to do because I did this behavior, this little tiny behavior that allows my brain to reprocess information differently. It's kind of amazing. It's and it's I admit it is hard. There are certain habits I've been trying for a while. Some are really easy, some are not. And that's where you have to realize you only have control over what you have control of. So there is both a combination of locus of control and personal agency. And um that's where we decide how effective our behavior is. Um, so personal agency is actually that that ability to originate and direct our actions. It is a little bit motivation, a little bit skill. No, it's not. Um, yeah, it is skill. It's a little bit of your skill. It's a little bit of what you know and how things work together for you. And it is how how tight are you holding on to things? How open are you to letting things just happen? So that's locus of control. It is how effective you are at performing the tasks, the actual skill and the purpose of, of what you're trying to do. So that's one aspect. The other is personal agency. And that is how much you believe you can control your own self, your own behavior, your own outcomes versus how much is happening to you. So is it how much you're affecting the world and your outcomes and your feelings about those outcomes versus how much is happening to you? Is it always your boss's fault? Is it always the kid's fault? Is it always the partner's fault? Is it always the government's fault? All those things can be um, tied directly to a, a lack of um, locus of control in your own life. It's all external. It's happening to you, not it's happening for you or you're causing it to happen by your own efforts. And the efforts is your agency. Can I make an effort that's effective enough to affect change, right? So it's a little bit of a difficult one to navigate and it requires practice too. But if you control yourself first and realize you can control, even though it's hard because we only have 5% control that we can affect at any given point, we can affect transformation by practicing that control. So we're rewiring the 90% of our behaviors that um, kind of keep us breathing and doing bad things when we aren't paying attention, right? So, and by bad, I don't mean illegal or immoral. I mean, a behavior we're trying to change <laughs> because it's not serving us um, in this particular instance, although it can cover the others as well. <laughs> um, so I, I suggest you start learning 
uh, a little bit more about how all these different psychological effects and how our brain processes information affect the outcomes you're getting. Because knowing what you can do, what what you actually have control over, and and you can improve certain skills about it, that's what's going to help you get different outcomes. It's not necessarily that you're doing it over and over and expecting a different result. It's that you are doing it over and over with new information now because you've been curious and exploring and experimenting with how different things affect the outcomes you are experiencing. So that's where we really want to um, play around and see what can happen. And, and unfortunately we can't wave a magic wand and everything be great in an instant. We really have to go through these simple steps that aren't easy. So little bit at a time, build each habit. Every time you build a new habit and a new set of circumstances, it adds to the next one. I'm Mary Ortiz Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And after the break, we are going to talk about, where am I at? Ooh, we're going to talk more about aspiration because you have to tie it into that juicy desired outcome. And that's the aspiration and why that's such an important factor in getting the results you want when you try to become more organized. So we got to take a quick break, but we'll be back after that. And we'll continue talking about aspiration. We'll be right back. The Streamline Clutter Solution online course will help you gain control of your stuff and space. What are you waiting for? The links are around here somewhere. Welcome back. I'm Miriam Martizzi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And before the break, we were talking about how we can control our behaviors um, through practice, repetition, implementing some, some steps to create new habits, to create that feedback loop in our own brains that gives us that um, knowledge that we are capable of change and transformation. It just takes a while and we have to actually rewire our brain to do it. Um, something as easy as changing I can't to I don't makes it, um, you know, a choice in a lot of ways. So here's the difference. We can make decisions and those decisions rewire our unconscious brain. So when it recognizes that situation again, it becomes the choice in the moment. So we, um, we, I'm sorry, I think I just said that backwards. We make choices in the moment based on, no, no, I did it right. Okay, we make decisions. <laughs> Sorry, I hope I didn't just confuse everybody totally. It's a little bit, it seems really easy and it's not. Um, so we make decisions in the moment based on what we want to achieve. That juicy desired outcome, we use that little bit of brain power that can direct new actions. Um, and as we practice that, it gets into our experience that that went okay, we didn't die, that's a possibility in the future to use that again. And then at a certain point, you don't have to consciously think I need to decide that I'm going to do that. Your unconscious brain just makes the choice to move that direction or do that behavior to make it happen. So it's how we learn to drive, really. You know, you make the decision to sit behind the wheel of a car. You make the decision to turn on the key, adjust the mirror, put on your seatbelt, whatever it is you do to get ready to drive. And then you drive. And at a certain point, you aren't having to think through each individual decision to make driving happen, you are just making the choice to drive to work and you get in the car and you go to work, right? So that's where it, it becomes a choice is when, when you you choose to drive to work. Um, so how does aspiration play into it, right? We've talked about that juicy desired outcome and I talked about how you have to think about it on a couple different levels. So what do you want? Do you want to raise happy, healthy, independent children? Do you want to start your own business and run a successful business for the next 20, 30 years? Um, do you want to travel the world? What is the aspiration? What is the thing that jazzes you up, right? What is your jam? Your purpose is not necessarily the same thing as your juicy desired outcome, but it's better because purpose 
takes it out of your own hands. Whereas juicy desired outcome is seeking. You are trying, you're striving, you're thriving when you're on your way. It's not just the end result. It is the learning experience of the whole journey to get that thing. So it helps to have imagination. And luckily, imagination is another practicable skill, right? When you have too many things in your way, when you are overwhelmed by the clutter, your imagination is actually stifled a bit because your unconscious brain is processing all the stuff, all the stimulus in the area so that you are not actually using your imagination. You're trying to solve the problems of how do I get rid of the things in my way that are, that are competing for my attention. So there's studies where they have kids in a pretty basic room with just some paper and crayons and a table, and they are much more likely to create cool, imaginative pieces of art than if they are in like a craft store environment where there's a little bit of everything everywhere and um, they are following someone's step-by-step instructions to do a thing. It kind of zaps all the imagination. It becomes about doing it right versus let's see what might happen. So keep an open mind as much as you can. Imagine sit, you're going to be better off getting rid of some things if you're trying to deal with clutter. If you sit down and imagine what can go from your couch rather than picking each item up and deciding in the moment because you will have bias come into play. But if you're imagining what would what would be different if that extra photograph was off the shelf? What would be different if those four books went away? What would be different if those toys weren't out on the floor? What would be different if I didn't have 12 of those, (laughs) right? You get to start seeing what it feels like in your brain. So imagination and sitting there and thinking through the possibilities. What if I moved this bookshelf over there? Don't actually do it yet. Just kind of sit there and think about what might happen if that if that were moved is it going to change the flow of the room is it going to change the focus of the room is it going to be distracting is it going to hinder something else so you're not going to be able to open the door anymore little things like that make a difference and then you will be more motivated because you will have thought through it's like scenario planning in your own house you're going to think through what would be different if this happened what if there was an emergency and we had to evacuate. Would we be able to find all our things and get to the the door easily? Would we not have to run to the store so often if we used a grocery list? Would we not run out of toilet paper if we planned for that ahead of time? What if we went to the library every two weeks instead of every week? You get to scenario plan your actual life, the things you spend time on, what the feeling of the house will be. It's so much faster when you sit down and imagine first. It's visualization. It's Olympic athletes sitting by the side of the pool, mapping out their um, dive. You've seen it, you've all seen it. I know you have. (laughs) The athlete will be sitting there doing these little weird arm movements. And that's all about imagining the dive in their head beforehand. So it's it's visualization. They imagine crossing the finish line. They imagine having a perfect score. You can do that with just your house and the environment. And then when you go to actually do the cleanup, it's like, oh, I already decided about that. I already decided about that. I already ran through the process of cooking without a stick blender. I know I don't need it. You know, whatever it is that you imagined, now you don't have to decide about because you already figured it out. It's figure outable. Our brains love to solve problems. The unconscious brain does. So why not let it use its energy while sitting on the couch instead of when it's distracted by all the things you are actually sorting through. So you get to pre-decide some things that make it more likely to be a choice when you actually go to make it happen. And that juicy desired outcome is what keeps you motivated. Okay, I've thought it through, it's gonna work. Let's do it so I can now experience the thing I wanted to experience instead, right? My juicy desired outcome is almost always something to do with freedom. I want to have enough margin in my day. I want to have fewer things to clean that require my attention so that I can watch TV, read a book, go on a hike, go hang out with my mom at the museum, whatever it is. But it's always a little bit about the freedom. 
how do I do less so that I can experience more of the things that bring me joy, right? What is it that can be more joyful? Stop hating what you're doing and figure out a way to love your life by doing more of the things you love and less of the things you don't, right? Is it true that shopping brings you joy every time? No. But if you know why you're shopping for a certain thing and find the specific thing you need to solve that problem, oh, that joy lasts a really long time. And it's so much better than just going to shopping for retail therapy, right? We want to figure that stuff out as well. So when was the last time you thought about something you'd like versus all the stuff you don't like? So... How many things are keeping you from doing the next thing because you can't do this until you do that? Or I can't start that project till I finish this. And that has been lingering for 13 years. <laughs> what if you finish that so you could do the rest? Or what if you just let that go and moved on to this, this stuff over here? What would happen? Maybe you're never gonna write that article about the thing that happened 20 years ago, but maybe you're gonna write the definitive history and you do need that stuff. But start thinking about what is the desired outcome? Why do you have the thing you bought to solve that problem? Is it still a problem? What happens if you solve the problem? What gets to happen next? Um, where are you in the process? So for those of you that like checklists, this is great. You get to outline what would this be? What would this project be like? What would have to happen first, second, and third? And then start that. If you are the kind of person that needs to be open to all the possibilities, sit there, imagine scenario planning and make a decision and start. If you're the kind of person that likes to tell a story about it, start writing the story and then take action because no story gets moved forward without action, right? Work with your own brain's way of processing information to make it happen. And to do that, you need a little bit of imagination, a little bit of motivation, and a lot of desire. Desire is the thing that helps us aspire to be better and more in the future. And who wouldn't want to be better and more in the future, right? Otherwise, we're just static. We're stagnant. We're decaying without really thinking about what can I do to be better? You go to school to be better. You hang out with different people to be better. You go to church to feel better. All of these things are about being better. But what if you take the control, the little bit of 5% of control you actually have and start using that to shape that better tomorrow, today, right? It's um, really theoretical today. Sorry about that. But I think it's really important. It, these are the pieces that my clients seem to not think are very important when they call me to help them get organized. And once we start, I realize how many of these things are actually holding them back. And we spend a little bit of time doing this. Sometimes it's while we're working so that they feel they're get. I'm sneaking it in. <laughs> they think they're working through and sorting and, and decluttering. And I know I'm actually trying to figure out what's going to be really a really juicy desired outcome so that they can continue um, with the transformation for the rest of their life. Um, that's how it all works together, right? We have a desire. We won't desire something we can't achieve. We practice the pieces that get us there and we scenario plan so that we can overcome obstacles before we actually get there. Pre-decide things, if you will. Um, I'm really excited about this topic. I think you might be able to tell lots of hand motions today. But um, when I figured out these connections, it's really what made the streamlined connection happen. So we got to take one more break. I'm Miriam Artizi Pino. This is the Streamlined Connection on Bold Brave TV Network. And we're going to tie it all up in a pretty little bow on the other end. And I'll tell you what your next steps can be. We'll be right back. Get the Streamlined Paper Solution online course and learn quick ways to control interesting information. The link's here. Today we talked a lot about control. Where do you need to let go? What can you do to 
harness the little bit of control that we do have over things. And um, yeah, imagine a better way of living. Uh, the letting go piece, it's interesting. It works with our unconscious brain. So when you let go of something, even something as simple as one wrapper, piece of packaging, the box from the computer, something that's pretty obviously trash, but maybe somewhere along the lines you heard that maybe you should do something different with that thing, <laughs> like recycle it or hold on to it for a return or you know some of those things. Did you ever think that through? Why do you hold on to things to return if you are not the kind of person that returns them? I'm not. I often buy things and then I'm like, ah, I should return that. And then I'm like, or I could just donate it and chalk it up to not the best decision I ever made. Um, so what is it that your brain is telling you, that unconscious part of your brain is telling you about not letting those things go, especially when it comes to like packaging or extra parts or, or pieces that you aren't sure what they're for once you buy something new? What is it your unconscious brain is telling you? It's fine, we have room, we don't need to keep it. I mean, we don't need to get rid of it. There's plenty of room. You might need it someday. What if instead you just started telling yourself, I don't keep things I don't need? <laughs> what would happen if you just started saying that to yourself every time that came up, right? It's practice of not needing those things anymore. What do you want? What is this in the way of? If I got rid of this, would I have room to do the other thing? You know, if I didn't have these papers all over my table, would we be able to eat at the table? Let go a little bit. What if I didn't spend two hours a day complaining that my family doesn't pick up their socks? What if I let that go? What if I just spent 30 seconds picking up the socks on the way to the laundry room? What if? How much time would you save? How much energy would you save? How much more um, pleasant might your conversations be when the kids get home? What if right? We're back to imagination, aspiring to be better every day. What could change if you just let go? What's the worst that could happen? Some people like to, to do scenario planning for the other way. What if you blew up the car every time you lost your keys? What if you could use those five minutes every day to write a novel? What if, right? What might get to happen for you? What's the worst that could happen if you let go of that piece of paper? Will they put you in jail? Will they take away your kids? Will you forget your husband? Probably not. So we have, um, also with letting go, there is a lot of biases come in. Uh, possession bias, nothing bad has happened yet, it's fine. All of those things are technically biases of the way our brain processes information. And so it becomes really hard to think about letting go, unless you switch it to what's the worst that could happen. Then your brain goes into problem solving mode and it will start running through imagination of what might happen if you got rid of that. And nothing bad is gonna happen. Nothing that is truly bad. There's a hierarchy of bad. There is a hierarchy of impact. There is a hierarchy of how much you love something. We tend to fling that around a lot. I love all my things, do you really? Do you love your pen? Maybe. Do you love an index card? Maybe. But I don't think you love them the same way as you love your pets and your family and maybe your favorite sweater. <laughs> what do you love more than the other things? What do you only like? What are you only tolerating? How can you let go of those things? It's a great place to start because if you get rid of all the things you're tolerating, things start to get done. You are on your way to living that better thing, getting that freedom you want, getting that um, security you want, getting whatever it is that your juicy desired outcome is, you get more of that when you let go of the things in your way. And by choosing them, by practicing little decisions on the easy stuff, rewiring that unconscious brain to know that you're not gonna die if you get rid of that envelope or that flyer from a company that you're never gonna do business with? What if you got rid of your utility bills? <gasps> what would happen? You'd get another one next month. <laughs> That's what happens. If you ever needed it, you could call and get a copy, right? What, what would happen if you let go of the 12-year-old catalogs? Nothing. 
You can recycle them. They can be made into new catalogs. They can be cut up for someone's vision board. They can be recycled into the best book ever written. What, what if you got rid of those old magazines, those old catalogs, the envelopes, all the little extra pieces of paper that are in your way? What if you got rid of those? What if you let go of all the control there is? That's what I'm wondering. What would happen if you just let go? Or alternatively, you can sit on your couch and think, if the house was on fire, what would I grab? Those are the most important things. So you pick your favorites and let go of what's left. You let go of the things that are totally definitely in your way. And now you're working from both ends. And you're going to end up with a really good solution in the middle because you've used your imagination, your brain problem solving skills, you've rewired by practicing to make decisions from both ends of the spectrum, and you are working to your juicy desired outcome. You have little constraints along the way till you get there. It may take a lot longer than you thought. It may take less time than you thought, but it's going to happen. The transformation happens through the experience of practicing these things. That's how we change. That's transformation. Um, you can't change your shirt without taking off the old one and putting on the new one. And occasionally, sometimes adjusting some things, maybe changing the undershirts, maybe adjusting the sweater you're going to wear over it. Little things might need to happen. Um, to make that happen. But that's a transformation, right? Changing your shirt can be transformative if you think about it right. Changing your whole life can be too. Um, your environment reflects who you are and how you want to be. And if you create more of how you want to be, you get to be more of who you want to be in the moment. So that's where we're at. You got to loosen up some control. You got to take control of the things you can control. And in the meantime, you get to live a better life. Um, so as always, don't forget, you can send comments, questions, um, concerns to Miriam at morethanorganized.net. Your comments are always welcome. Next time on the show, we are going to have Lisa Griffith, who is also a certified professional organizer. She's from The Organized Way, and we are going to talk about making decisions and boundaries, which is going to build on what we talked about today. And don't forget, it's always more fun to organize together. So tell all your friends about the Streamlined Connection. And you can visit morethanorganized.net for all my free resources and a few paid ones. Um, and I wish you a better, more organized and delightful day.